what do you have to lose? If you're not losing a, a life or you're not losing a soul or anything, then take the risk. Welcome back to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet then you're actually wasting your own time at this point click the subscribe button and join the revolution today I am back with another black excellence series interview and as always we're gonna hop straight into it can you tell us about yourself who are you where do you come from what do you do Spinita, thank you for having me my name is Abi Mazibuko and I'm the managing director of AJ telecoms and digital one SA uh, which are both ISP companies and at the same time those are the two platforms which i do use to run my youth empowerment and development projects i am also an inspirational speaker and a motivational speaker to the youth out there in south africa and the southern hemisphere i actually empower and grow the youth through telecommunications by giving them all the knowledge that the big telecoms will not give to an individual so they'll normally want you to go to university get the qualifications and so forth before they actually hire you only then will they feed the knowledge into your brain what I do, I take you as raw as you are. I give you the knowledge of telecoms. I teach you how to sell and I put you out there to go make money. That is what Angel Telecoms does. That's what Amy Mazibuko does. And what actually inspired you to choose to go for people in this manner, meaning that you train them and you, you actually, as you said, you take them as raw as they are. What made you want to do that? Because uh, I, was a, I was a youth. At one stage in my life, I was young and I wanted it all. And uh, when I grew up, I never had the platform. I never had someone who could actually groom me. Someone can actually coach me and actually help me reach out to my dreams. So I had to learn everything by myself and uh, I hustled my way. You know, I remember my very first apartment. I was 16 years old when I moved into my very first apartment. I was by myself, had to sign my own lease. I didn't even have an ID back then. Wow. <laughs> had to sign my own lease. I got a job at the age of 16, uh, which I got promoted to become a manager at the age of 17. So all those scenarios, all those uh, factors, you know, the, those learning curves that I went through, I thought about it, I said, listen, the youth nowadays, they've got the internet, they've got social media, they've got a lot of exposure that can actually drive them to failure. Not like what I had when I was growing up. So I'm gonna try and avoid them driving themselves into failure. So that is why I brought up this platform of youth empowerment and development through telecommunications uh, by means of AJ Telecoms to try and avoid them driving themselves to failure the way I nearly did to myself. In your journey as an author, what lessons have you learned and what struggles have you faced? Jeez, um, resilience is one, but I don't want to dwell on that side of it. But uh, the struggles that I faced, you know, being in the field that I'm in right now, you need to gain belief from the public, you need to gain trust, and obviously you need to gain hope or give hope. So I'll, I'll break it down. So doing what I do, you need to make sure whatever you do, people are watching. Even though you're walking in a mall, you might not know anyone, but they know you. Right. So whatever you do, they'll learn from it. So I need to make sure that people trust me, whether on social media or in real life. I need to make sure that I actually motivate people to believe in me. Whatever I say, whatever I do, they need to believe in me. So I need to, mm. I need to love what I talk, you know, and uh, I need to be able to give people hope. I've had a couple of youngsters inbox me, hey, listen, maybe hey, you've been an inspiration to me. Like, I don't even know what a person, right. I don't know what I've inspired you to do. And like, listen, you've given me hope. And after watching a couple of your, video, your videos, uh, I can actually say there's actually light at the end of the tunnel. So those are things that I need to do in the background, not knowing that they're impacting someone's life. You know? mm. So all in all, that has been a bit of a struggle for me to write this book because now I to, I to package all that, bundle it together. So that when someone reads this book, they can actually read it and as they're reading from page 1 to page 10 to page 20, they're gaining trust in AB. Wow. They, they're being inspired by, by what AB is doing. They're believing in, in the dream or the, 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 the vision AB is actually selling them in the book. And obviously I'm giving them hope. So by the time I'm done, I mean, or they're done reading it, they can say, listen, whatever this dude has written in this book, I'm going to go and do it. So, mm. You do a lot of public speaking and you do it well. You know, guys, this man can sell you anything. You know, something that you absolutely don't need, he will sell it to you. He will take your own belonging and sell it back to you. That's how good he is. But now I want to ask you, what is the key to public speaking, to being so convincing, to getting people to believe you? Whenever I go on stage, there, there are three factors or three things I tell myself. Mm -hmm. 
I am the speaker. I am the crowd. I am the mentor. Wow. What am I? What do I mean by that? Whatever I speak, my brain needs to align to that, and I need to motivate myself, tell myself that, dude, you're speaking sense, mm. even though I'm mumbling. But the moment I tell myself that I'm speaking sense, and then I've got the mentorship part, so I mentor myself, I push myself as I speak, whatever word I utter. Push myself, and trust me. By the time I'm done with that talk, people will come and say, "Damn man, how long have you been doing this thing for? Like you're so good at this." And in my mind, I was like, I, I, I "Wasn't that good?" But mm. people come and they'll think that it was good. But now, the moment you start opening your mouth and you like, you know, thinking, "What am I doing?" Then you start staring at someone's eyes because now the crowd is there. Mm. And then you you'll do badly. But now I try. I I I, I black out and. I'm I'm the audience. I'm the speaker. I'm the mentor. Everything in one brain, yeah. and that has led to my success in what I do. You do a lot of training. You do a lot of teaching and yes. motivating. Yes. What gives you the confidence to do what you do? And by that I mean, what makes you believe that what you have to offer is so good that other people need to see it too? Does that make sense? Um, yes. So I'll, I'll make an example of. Let's start with South Africa. Mm. When I looked at the census of South Africa 2017, there was about 56.5 million people in South Africa. Um, Johannesburg alone, there's about 10.7 million uh, citizens in Johannesburg alone. Mm-hmm. And trust me, we've got motivational speakers, we've got inspirational speakers, we've got ISP companies running, but they're not doing what I'm doing. And uh, um, the current motivational speakers that we have in this country, I bet you sitting at home right there, you can't even name five of them. So that just goes to show you that there's not enough of us in the market. Mm. And if I say maybe name two that you know of, you'll start, you'll start naming the likes of Tony Robbins, uh, the likes of uh, Les Brown. Those are all people from the United States of America. Mm. So that woke me up and told me that listen, I am needed in this industry. In whatever I'm doing right now, I am needed. And that is what what led to who I am today. What are some of the sacrifices that you've had to make for entrepreneurship, for, you know, being a motivational speaker and, you know? So there's there's decisions that you need to make in your life and those decisions are so tough that at times, you know, the Bible will say you cannot serve two masters. Um, there's times one will want to run a business and at the same time work a nine to five job, which will not be possible. You find yourself working a nine to five job, but you're actually neglecting your business and then your business will fail and you'll think you're a failure. Mm. But then there's also the point, the part whereby you resign from your work and you want to run your business full time and then it does not work out. Then now you've actually hungered and starved your family and starved yourself. Then you have to start from, from the word go. Mm. So the risk factor, the risk factor is actually quite big. So you need to calculate your risks. You need to know what you're doing. And uh, that is just me. I've been a risk taker since, since I started, since I've started business, since I've dwelt into entrepreneurship. I've, I've just been taking risks. And I believe business is nothing without risks. Even your big CEOs, I don't want to name corporates, they still take risks mm. till this day. Even your your billion rand turnover companies still take risks till today. So you as an individual, you just have one question that you need to ask yourself before you take that risk. What do you have to lose? If you're not losing a, a life or you're not losing a soul or anything, then take the risk. Mm. Because if it's just a risk that you need to take and you know that you're going to be kicked out of your apartment at the end of the month because you didn't pay the rent, it's a worthwhile risk because then if it didn't work out, you just get kicked out, you'll get another apartment. You know, If it's a risk of maybe losing your job because they see that you're concentrating more on your business, I believe it's a risk to take because you can then get another job. Mm. <laughs> but you need to calculate it. Don't now go out there and say, no, A, B, C, I must. No, calculate your risk quite wisely, but you're not going to dwell into any business, you're not going to dwell into any venture without taking risks. That That is what I live by. Mm. That, that is AB. I'm a risk taker in everything that I do. So that is why I managed to wear as much hats as I do today. It's all from the foundations of risking. Now, a lot of people uh, actually don't think about the risk factor of entrepreneurship, you know, and that's one of the misconceptions people have. Another one is I had someone tell me that they want to be an entrepreneur because they want to wake up when they want and sleep when they want. And that is not entrepreneurship. What are some of the misconceptions that you had about entrepreneurship before you got started or some that you've heard that were actually just outrageous? Doesn't, doesn't, doesn't work that way. Like when I started, you know, there's a point where I just wanted to drive nice cars, live in a nice house. Mm. You'll find out that the business that you're doing is bringing in the revenue to actually buy the car. But now, deep down in your head, you know that you cannot buy that car because that very same 
revenue that you've generated, the amount of money you made, you need to fund it back into the business. So which means you need to sacrifice. You need to drive that car for as long as you can until you actually see positive revenue, no matter what people say out there. That is why, especially the black majority, we fail too soon because you'll start a business and as you start the business, the first amount of revenue that pops in, boom, you just want to go spend it and invest it into big things that you literally cannot afford it. The fact that you have the money doesn't mean you can afford it, you know, so, um, I think that, that that is it. You know, it's hard to motivate people when you yourself are feeling demotivated, you know what I mean? And so in your personal life and in your work life, how do you deal with failure and rejection? If someone had to say they deal with it quite well or they don't have any feelings towards failure and rejection, they'd be lying. Mm. We we all we all get hit hard by rejection. We all get we all go through failure, no matter who you are, no matter what position you hold in society. You know, we all go through failure. We all get rejected, and uh, the best thing or the best solution would be just to get up, dust yourself, and go. Mm. That's it. Majority of the people, when they get rejected, they actually push themselves further. They're like, no, these people don't want me. They don't like me. I will not do this anymore. Right. I'll stop. Or they'll go through failure. They say, listen, I've bent my fingers once, twice, too shy, whatever. I'm not going to do it again. You know, and mm. that that results in us really failing for good. So I just say, the best, the, the way I can actually answer your question, I think the best solution is to just get up, dust yourself, and move ahead. You came up with a formula for success. There were some people who say that there is no such thing as a formula for success, but you came up with one, and I want to know how did you come up with that and how did you know that it would work or how did you test it to ensure that hey it works so my formula for success or i can say my business model i've, I've been i've been mumbling it since the beginning of this video youth empowerment and development through telecommunications the fact that i want to change someone's life already will change my life mm. the fact that i want to help some young kid or some young guy's dreams come true eventually my dreams will come true so that wow. is that is the formula for any form of success if you in a business knowing that you can change someone's lives trust me you're going to succeed but if you get into business to enrich yourself if, if you're in, in it for yourself everything is about you it's a one-man show you you you, you me, me me it's gonna go up but it's definitely gonna come down wow. but now if i'm going up and i grab a couple of people that go up with me and i go further up i grab a couple of people that go up with me the day that destiny will hit me hard that i need to come down the 1,500 or 2,000 people that I've helped, motivated, or groomed mm. to make it in life, they're the ones who will say, listen, our men A is actually struggling. They'll come back and pull me up with them. Wow. So that is my formula. We are doing an interview for the Black Excellence series, but I want to know from your side, what do you believe Black Excellence is? <sighs> Black Excellence, I'd say, I'd say, number one, the first thing that comes up, um, the, the first thing that comes to mind is 100% owned. <laughs> Triple B, yeah, baby, <laughs> and uh, doing it on your own. No help, no help, no funding from any white-owned bank, no financial backing from any secret uh, funder. Everything, you do it on your own, and you succeed on your own, and you're the face of the company, you're the face of the business. That is black excellence for me. In accordance to your definition of, of black excellence, do you think that's something that is possible? You know, seeing that the condition that a lot of black people find themselves in where they do not have enough financial uh, capabilities to start a business. I believe everyone's got the financial capability of starting a business, not monetary wise. Mm. Yeah. That is the best financial backing that you have to start a business. It's your brain. Whatever's in your brain, try and see how best to bring it to reality. Yes, someone will say, but no, 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 Evie, there, hold on a bit. Everything needs money. Dude, even if you want to start a sales business and you need to buy products, the first thing is go to the store that you want to buy the product from, take a picture of the product, speak to the uh, store manager, hey, I want to buy this product, they'll give you the price, whatever. Even if you don't have the money in your pocket, go out, find a client, show them the product. Hey, listen, there's this product that I'm going to sell to you. It's actually in the store, it's in the warehouse. This mm. is what it looks like, this is what it does. The person must believe in you, trust in you, and then they'll pay for the product. Then you take the money, go to the store, buy it, and give it to the client. You've started your business just like that. You don't have to physically have the product in your hand. Mm. So that is why I believe not all businesses require financial, financial backing to start. Everything just requires the brain to start. I have a bowl here and it's got tongue twisters in it. And you have 30 yeah. seconds to pick one at random and recite it as fast as you can. Okay. All right. Let me get the timer. In three, two, 
one, go. Righty. Okay. So I just need to say it as fast as I can. Hey? Yep. Silly Sally Swiftly Shoot, Seven Silly Sheep. The Seven Silly Sheep, Silly Sally Shoot, Silly uh, Shelly Shelly South. These sheep didn't shouldn't sleep in a shack. Sheep should sleep in a shed. Wow, that was long. Faster, let's go. <laughs> silly Sally Swiftly Shoot, Seven Silly Sheep. The Seven Silly Sheep, Silly Sally Shoot, Silly Shelly Shout. See that, 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 that. Hi everybody, my name is Abi Maziguko, the Managing Director of AJ Telecoms and Digital One SA. I am also an inspirational uh, speaker and motivational speaker, and you are watching the Black Excellencies, brought to you by none other than Benita Dania. That's it for today, guys. I hope you liked this video. Don't forget to comment, like, share, and subscribe, and I will be back with more videos. If you want to see more videos like this, then please do comment down below. And if you have any feedback for this video, as always, comment down below because we love to see what you have to say. Peace and love, guys. Cheers.